Okay, so this is our last type of attractive force. This is the weakest attractive force. So these are not strong interactions at all, but you could potentially get a lot of them. So it's the weakest attractive force, and it's only going to be present in non, or it's only going to be the, it's present in everything, but it's only going to be relevant. It's only going to be your strongest attractive force. It's only going to be the one that you worry about in non-polar covalent compounds. All right. So if you have a ionic compound, ion-ion attractive forces are going to be way stronger than dispersion forces. They're going to be magnitude stronger. If you have a polar covalent compound, that means, well, it's either going to be able to hydrogen bond or at the very least have dipole-dipole interactions. Those are going to be stronger than dispersion forces on a one-to-one -one level. And so those are going to be the driving factors. So, you know, this is like, you know, it, it can be relevant, but only in the absence of everything else. So it's like, oh, you're driving a Lamborghini. Is it, you know, oh, your tire's a little bit low. You're really going to notice, like, a loss of power? No. Okay, well, you're driving a 1980 Honda. Yeah, maybe you want to keep those tires gassed up, help you merge on the highway a little better. You know, that's the difference. So it's, you're, we're really working the margins here. And for some molecules, their attractive forces are living in those margins. And for other ones, it's not an issue. So, um, only nonpolar compounds. And what it really breaks down to for tiebreaker, like if you have two nonpolar molecules, more surface area or more molecular surface area. equals stronger dispersion forces. Okay? So, basically, larger molecule equals more surface area. So, for example, these are all carbons and hydrogens. That's right, our old friend line drawings have not gone away. These are all carbons and hydrogens, which are all nonpolar bonds, which means we are dealing with a nonpolar molecule over here. And guess what we have over here? another nonpolar molecule. So if I have a beaker of this and a beaker of this, so these are interacting with each other versus these interacting with themselves, which group is going to have stronger dispersion forces? Because they're not going to have hydrogen bonding. There's no OHs. They're not going to have ion-ion. There's no ionic anything in here. And they're not going to have dipole-dipole because there isn't even a polar bond. Not to mention if it would cancel out or not. Like, it's just not there. So, this is nonpolar. This is nonpolar. That means that the strongest attractive force they have is dispersion forces. So take a second and think, which one's larger, which one is more surface area? You know, which one of these is it? Which one of these looks bigger? Hopefully you've realized it's this one, right? This is a chain of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons. This is a chain of 1, 2, 3, 4. So this has more surface area. And you could say roughly, you know, 50% more than this. Like We took 4 carbons, we add 2 more on Okay, it's it's not, we don't need to get too crazy about it. Like, we're not going to get too analytical here, but, you know, it's a longer chain. That equals more surface area. It's as easy as that. So we have more surface area, there's more people, there's more electrons running around on the deck of the ship. There's more likelihood that they're going to unevenly distribute somewhere, you're going to get that temporary positive here, maybe a temporary negative over here, and that's going to go away, and then maybe it shows up over here. But there's more places for it to happen. Um, and so it's more likely to happen. If it's more likely to happen, then you're more likely to get those interactions, which means they're going to occur more strongly. Even though they're still very weak overall, it's still going to happen more often, more attraction. So, essentially you're just looking for a nonpolar molecule that's bigger than the other one. 
Now, if you see anything else, and I'm like, oh, which of these has the strongest attractive force? You want to look for ions first, you want to look for hydrogen bonding second, you want to look for a polar molecule third, and the absence of all that, you go, okay, well then dispersion forces are all that's left. There's always dispersion forces, and there's just nothing else that's more important on that molecule, so I have to compare and figure out which one has more of it. And that's what you do. You just look for more surface area. Okay, so, this one can be a little tricky sometimes for people, but just recognize that all it really boils down to is, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a attractive force that's always there, but it really only matters for um, nonpolar molecules. Everything else that gets washed away. All right, so uh, we'll make one more video for this section here, kind of tie everything together, and then bring into it uh, physical properties as well. And then this idea of attractive forces is going to be really important for the solubility section we do next as well. So just a heads up on that.